The following videos were designed for the American Lifeguard Association to give individuals the knowledge and skills needed to become a certified lifeguard. We will be performing various life-saving exercises throughout these videos to examine proper rescue techniques and victim care. Make sure to review the manual for additional information on rescue procedures. Lifeguard candidates must successfully complete the pre-course swim and pre-course sprint retrieval before applying for their lifeguard certificate. The pre-course swim consists of 300 meters. The first 100 meters must be freestyle or front crawl, the next 100 meters breaststroke, and the last 100 meters either of the two strokes. Although there is no time limit, candidates must continue with forward motion throughout the entire swim, not hanging on the sides of the pool or lap lanes. Doing so will constitute a failure of the pre-course swim, at which time candidates must start from the beginning, not where they left off. The pre-test brick retrieval is a timed 1 minute and 40 second retrieval test in which a 10 pound object, such as this diving brick, will be dropped in at least 7 feet of water. Candidates, starting at the opposite end of the pool, will use either the breaststroke or the freestyle to approach the brick, at which time use a feet first surface dive to submerge and grab the brick with two hands. Placing the brick on your chest, you'll kick backwards, keeping two hands on the brick at all times. The test will be concluded when candidates place the brick on the side and force themselves out of water. If at any time you feel like you're going to submerge, simply drop the brick and return to the pool edge. Equipment A lifeguard's main piece of rescue equipment is the rescue tube. When securing the rescue tube, place the strap over one shoulder diagonally across the chest. The tube should be folded securely under both armpits. While on land, have the excess safety line secured in one hand to prevent it from becoming tangled or caught. Other important life-saving equipment includes protective gloves, lifeguard whistles, breathing masks, backboard, and first aid kit. Lifeguards should always be familiar with the location of these materials in case of emergency. Victim Recognition through proper patron surveillance, an effective lifeguard is able to quickly and correctly identify victims in need of assistance. The following are the four stages of victim progression. Standard swimmer. Although different swimmers often swim at different speeds using different strokes, forward motion is key in staying afloat. Standard swimmers indicate consistent forward motion, horizontal body position, and sustained breathing. Distressed victim. An unsupported distressed victim differs from a standard swimmer due to the presence of a more vertical position in the water with little to no forward motion. Distressed victims may call out for help, use hand motions, or make quick eye contact with those around them. Drowning victim. If assistance is not provided, victims may then progress into a drowning victim. Drowning victims are no longer able to progress in a forward motion of any kind and are usually vertical in the water, simply trying to get air and stay afloat. The instinct to capture short bursts of air will cause them to position their mouth and nose straight up, often preventing them from shouting or calling out for help. Unresponsive victim. If assistance still does not occur, the victim will progress into an unconscious state. Unresponsive victims will often remain floating in the water and return to a somewhat horizontal position. If long periods of time have passed, unresponsive victims may even submerge underwater. Activating the Emergency Action Procedures When a lifeguard recognizes that there is an emergency and has identified the victim or victims, he or she must then signal the lifeguard team using a designated sign that assistance is needed. What follows is a sequence of specifically determined procedures taken by the lifeguard team to ensure an efficient and effective rescue. External Side Entry An external side entry is a safe and easy way to enter the pool that creates little disturbance to the water. First, place the rescue tube on the deck and slowly ease yourself down so that you are seated on the edge of the pool deck. Using both hands, lift your body so that you may securely slide into the water. Be cautious, for the pool deck may be slippery. Once in the water, secure your rescue tube before approaching the victim. Shallow Water Entry 
In shallow water or at heights from a rescue stand, extra precaution must be taken to prevent injury to the knees, legs, and feet. Lifeguards must enter the water in a seated position with knees bent and feet flat to absorb possible contact with a pool floor. Remember to jump a safe distance from the victim to avoid contact. If you submerge during the entry, quickly reassess to make sure the victim's position has not changed. Deep Water Entry Lifeguards will use the deep water entry in the presence of water deeper than five feet. At the edge of the pool, slightly lean forward with open legs, one leg in front of the other as if you were walking. Enter the water keeping your rescue tube in front for flotation. Do a strong kick, closing your legs as you hit the water. External Tube Extension In some emergency situations, lifeguards can assist a victim without even entering the water. The most basic extension is using the rescue tube. First, remove the strap from your shoulder. This will ensure that the struggling victim does not pull you into the water. Next, in a crouched position, extend the rescue tube to the victim. Be cautious when extending the tube so as not to hit the victim's head. If the victim does not grab on, shout to get their attention to the tube. Using a hand-over-hand -hand motion with a low center of gravity, pull the victim to the nearest pool edge for assistance. Lifeguards may also use other equipment, such as a shepherd's crook or reaching pole, to give external assistance. Just like with tube extensions, make sure not to strike the victim with extension devices. Internal Tube Extension Sometimes, lifeguards may find themselves in a situation where they are not able to effectively secure the victim. In these situations, an internal tube extension while in the water is a good alternative to tow the victim to safety. Simply extend the tube to the victim from a safe distance. Once the victim has grasped the tube, swim toward the edge or shallow area with victim in tow.